you know, a lot of what I will talk to you about today um, is really focused on how far we've come. I actually was in training in medical school back in 1988. And at that time, we had a lot of young people, frankly, some of my teachers, um, friends, who were dying of a disease that we'd never seen. And we didn't know what to do. And it really was more a time of empathy and compassion than of science, because we really didn't have any science. And so what I'm about to share with you is we spent a lot of time since I've been at TED Med um, talking about our great science and technology. And I'll talk about that a little bit, but I'm really going to talk about how do we get it to the people who need it? And what are we doing to get there? And frankly, as some of us have already said, it is not going to come from the scientific community. Um, that, I can say, I truly believe is where we are today. So that was 1988. Now I'm going to fast forward. We had a first drug developed. Some of you remember this time, right? We were looking at people and we're like, OK, we have a start. We started finding out about what to call this. We started looking at what treatments could be, and rapidly. So there's a lot that's been said about the scientific community, but giving props to the scientific community rapidly. By 1996, we not only had treatments that actually worked, we now take care of patients who are in their 50s. And do you know what we take care of? We don't even talk about HIV. We're treating them for high cholesterol. The successes here are something that we take for granted a little bit sometimes when we talk about what we haven't done. And so I'd like to at least recognize that there is work that has been done that works in this country. And part of what our issues are is why isn't it working for everyone? So we have great science. It's working. And so we're talking about people who are living with a disease. But we also today are preventing the transmission of HIV. I mean, I just want people to wrap their heads around that. Mothers today giving birth who are HIV positive were delivering children who are not infected based on our treatments. And just kind of absorbing that we're able to do that. We actually today talk about treatment as prevention, where recent studies published in the last couple of weeks in the New England Journal show that if we begin treating someone early, very early, that we can have normal lives. This is a disease we never thought of would be a chronic disease. And so, yes, I could be up here celebrating, and there are lots of companies who've talked about the great technologies and the great advances that have been made and that they're working on to help with this celebration. But we keep coming to this wall um, for everything that we do in healthcare. And I frankly am not sure how far we go going forward if we keep doing some of the things we're doing. So what I'll share with you is some of the new things that the company that I work with, other companies are trying to do, but also share with you that HIV as a disease is actually just one of these many diseases. Because today, we still have 25% of people in the United States who don't know their status. This is not because we don't have great treatments. We have 50% of people who know they have the disease and they're not receiving care. Again, you've heard everyone talk about the technology, the billions of dollars. The, we've got all of this. We still can't do it. We still have health disparities. I actually entered medicine because of health disparities. When I was 13 years old, the decision was made in my family and been on that path since. We still have it. And there are things that even with every time someone goes to a doctor, right, they tell us, eat right, exercise, take your medications. People don't take their medications. We have poor adherence. For HIV, it's a really big deal because you can have mutations and then you have a new disease that's much harder to treat than if you began treating it early. 
But if, I was, if you hadn't seen the cover sheet for this talk, and I had just come up here and said, 25% of people don't know their status. 50% of those who know they have it are not receiving regular care. Minority groups are disproportionately affected, and there's poor adherence. I could have been talking about obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease. You name the disease, I could be talking about it in the United States. So the problems that we have, and people talk about, you know, it could be a third world country, maybe it's somewhere else, it's here. We can't get our treatments to our people. The treatments that we have today, not the new cool stuff that's coming, the treatments that we have today, we cannot get them to people. So what can we do about that? And so that's kind of my journey. When I was actually training as a physician, some of you may remember this, there was an article published by a team called McCord and Freeman back in 1990, which pretty much, you know, I actually went to medical school to do one thing, changed my career. And what the article essentially said, that if you were a man born in Harlem, you had less chance of making it to 65 than a man born in Bangladesh. This article was published in 1990, could be published in 2011. And just so we're aware, some of the things that we're doing and talking about, we need to get them to the people. We have great science, we have great technology, we now need to get it there. So how do we do that? So I think it's outside of the scientific community. One of the things that works is getting things to people within their community around their schedules. And this is simple stuff, right? You don't need to see a doctor sometimes just to help you remember to take your medication. You need someone who's there when you get off of work at 5 o'clock, or who's there on the weekends when you actually have time in between your lives, who can give you the access locally in your community, understands you culturally, understands that, yeah, this is the only time that you can do it, and can speak with you in a way that you truly want to hear your health information delivered. And there are places that are doing that. I actually mention here some of the places you already heard, um, I'm from Walgreens, and yes, we're doing it. We have 8,000 stores. If you come in to buy a tissue and you have a question, we're changing that model of how do we get healthcare to people who actually need it? And how do we do it in a time frame that fits into your life? And how do we find out what's important for you within the community? And that could be that, you know, within this community, if you're looking for great food options, you need someone to understand what's available. And so, yes, we're taking on that challenge, too. So my journey, though definitely based in science, is really based on community care. And how do we get what we do really well, because we've got a lot of great drugs, you guys have heard about it. We've got a lot of great treatments, and we have really good doctors. But we've got lots of other people who can reach out for healthcare. I sometimes think, you know that card you get at Starbucks, and so my addiction, you get it and you can download a song while you're there. Wouldn't it be great to download a health message, something that was really personal to you? There are ways that we can do this that we haven't thought of. And frankly, the reason we haven't thought about it is because we're in the scientific community. And I'm not always sure, even though I think some people, um, definitely a lot of the retailers, marketers, are a lot smarter at this than we are, that we are humble enough to say to them, come and teach us. Um, how to do this. We've only recently started learning that we need to market to our patients and to our consumers, and we need to change the paradigm, and instead of making them come to us, change that. And when I say recent, I mean in the late 90s. So if you're thinking that, you know, the rapid innovations that you've seen in technology, that we are talking about it, and it's going to get to the end user really quickly, um, I think we have some ways to go on that. But there are some people, I think, who are ready to do that. And we have to be ready and willing to meet them there. The last piece I want to say about this is sometimes people think, yeah, but if I do this, you know, what are the rewards? What's going to happen? 
These are incredibly profitable areas for everyone who's thinking, how do I make a profit on what she's talking about? These are the next areas for where that's going to happen. You definitely don't need an MD degree to do it. And most importantly, in the United States, and I'm focused on the United States because I cannot believe some of these things we just can't get done. So we need to focus on it community by community and just get it done for the communities that we live in. And yes, I'm from New York, so pretty focused on how that works. From the simple things, right? Just getting labels, food labels, change totally how we look at things there. Looking at how we have the access. Give someone a nine o'clock appointment after I've put my kids to bed, you actually have my full attention. How do we make that something that in states and in communities people are willing to do? And so profitable, lowers healthcare cost, and we're looking for new solutions that are this simple, easy to implement tomorrow. Thank you.